Looking for magic cards? Shop at Flipside Gaming using promo code LVD or find them on TCG Player through my affiliate link. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at our first historic deck featuring the new cards from the third historic anthology expansion and we're diving right into the jank as voted on by my supporters on Patreon with this five color Mesa's End deck. So we're a gate deck running Mesa's End, a land that enters the battlefield tapped and makes colorless mana, but we can pay three and tap Mesa's End and return it to our hand to search our library for a gate card, put it on the battlefield and then shuffle our library. And then if we control 10 or more gates with different names, we win the game. And in uh, Arena right now, there's 11 differently named uh, gates. 10 of them are the guild gates, one for each guild. And then we also have Gateway Plaza, that also counts as a gate. So we can have 10 of these 11 differently named uh, gates in play to win the game with Mesa's End. That way, if one of the gates somehow gets destroyed or milled, we still have potentially 10 gates left to win the game with. And then, of course, we've got some of the usual suspects and gates synergy cards in the deck and plenty of ramp to make sure we can get to the alternate win condition from Mesa's End. And then our alternate win condition, plan B, if you will, in case the Mesa's End plan doesn't pan out, is to just hardcast Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger for 10 mana. And that's another card that got added in the newest Historic Anthology expansion. And then for 10 mana, we get a 10-10 Indestructible Legendary Eldrazi. And when we cast Ulamog, we get to exile two target permanents. So even if Ulamog gets countered, we still get that exile two effect. And then when Ulamog attacks, defending player has to exile the top 20 cards of their library. So even if the opponent can chum block Ulamog after two attacks, they're probably going to be milled out. So we can win the game that way as well. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck, starting out with our early ramp with our Boreal Gracer that can put a land from our hand onto the battlefield, since of course we're interested in putting lands into play with this deck as opposed to your mana elves that can generate mana, since we need to be able to win with Mesa's End and speed up that process. And then we also have the full play set of Open the Gates, which doesn't ramp, but helps us find maybe the missing gates to help us get to 10 a little bit faster, and uh, can also help us enable some of the gate synergies in the deck. Then we've got the full play set of Growth Spiral as a 2-mana ramp card that lets us put an extra land in play and draws a card. And then at 3 mana we've got more gate payoff cards with Guild Summit, a 3 mana enchantment that when we play it we can tap any number of gate cards to draw that many cards. And whenever we play a gate with the Guild Summit in play we also get to draw a card, so great in combination with all the various ramp cards. And then Gates Ablaze is our sweeper of choice, dealing damage equal to the number of gates we control to all creatures. Then at 4 mana we've got Circuitous Roots, which is one of the more exciting ramp cards to be playing in a Mesa's End deck, as it lets us search up two different gate cards and put them in play. Great with the Guild Summit as well, as we can potentially draw two cards right away for each Guild Summit in play. And it also just helps us ramp into Ulamog if we're holding one. And then at 5 mana we've got the full playset of Golos, Tireless Pilgrim, as a 3-5 Legendary Scout, that when it enters the battlefield lets us search our library for any land card and put it on the battlefield tapped. You usually paired with Field of the Dead, and we could easily be playing Field of the Dead in this deck as well, since it pairs so well with the various uh, Gates and Mesa's End. But we decided not to play Field of the Dead in this deck, just to try something a little bit different, force us to win with Mesa's End as opposed to an army of zombie tokens. But it's definitely possible that a version with Field of the Dead is more competitive. And then, of course, when we play Golos, we can either search up a gate or a Mesa's End if we don't have one yet. And then the activated ability gives us a powerful mana sink in the late game, since for 7 mana we can exile the top 3 cards of our library, and we may play those cards this turn without paying their mana cost. So if we exile a land and haven't played a land yet, we can still play them. So we usually want to make sure we can still play a land for the turn after using Golos' ability. So if we do exile multiple gates, we can still at least play one of them and don't risk getting a bunch of gates exiled so we can't win with Mesa's End anymore. But then of course we could also hit all sorts of spells, including Ulamog. And if we cast Ulamog with Golos' ability, it counts as being cast, so we still get to exile those two permanents. So that's potentially very powerful. But then just hitting any of the gate payoff cards or ramp cards like Root are very good too. And then topping off our curve, we have two copies of Archway Angel as a 6-mana 3-4 flyer that when it enters the battlefield gains 2 life for each gate we control, so this can help us gain a ton of life against aggressive decks. And then of course our two copies of Ulamog, the Ceaseless Hunger, as our alternate win condition in case the Mesa's End doesn't pan out. And then the mana base, besides the 10 gates and the 
Gateway Plaza and then two mazes end. We also have three basic forests, as well as four copies of Steam Vents, four copies of Stomping Ground, and four copies of Breeding Pool. So those are kind of the untapped lands to complement the gates to make sure we can still play our cards on curve instead of having to play a turn behind schedule because of all the tap lands. There's definitely builds you could play off this deck that play even more gates, but given that we need 10 differently named gates, of course if we have multiple gates with the same name in play, besides potentially being good with Guild Summit or Gates Ablaze, it's not really progressing or a Mesa's End all that much. And between Golos, Mesa's End itself, and then all these search effect with Roots and Open Gates, we should have plenty of ways to find the missing gates and win the game. And then we also get to play with Jagantha, the Wellspring, as our companion, as kind of a free roll. 5 mana 5-5 five, five can also help us activate Golos's ability. Alright, so that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see what the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Turn to Gross Spiral, thanks for untapped Stomping Ground. A ramp with the Roots, or maybe play Guild Summit first. And then Golos as a nice mana sink. Turn one Witching Well, so it could be an Artifact Synergy deck, could be the uh, Underworld Breach combo deck. That one probably not a great matchup. And search for Ascanta, so this definitely looks like Underworld Breach. So the only interaction on our part that really matters is Ulamog to exile some stuff. I guess Gates of Blaze can still be somewhat useful at killing the Excavator. So I could Roots, or I could draw more cards with Guild Summits. I think if the goal is to cast an Ulamog eventually, it's better to just ramp. Get my black and my whites. And then it probably doesn't matter too much what else I get. Let's get Simic. Sahili into Mox Amber. So they're still missing the excavator. So I can play Golos, get Mesa's End, or get another gate, or I can go double Guild Summit and then next turn play Golos, getting a gate and draw a million cards. Yeah, that's maybe better. So. Tap one of them. Opponent just sacrifices Witching Well, not the scariest turn. Currently four cards in Graveyard, so Ascanta's not flipping anytime soon. Alright, so we've got a decent amount of gates in play already. Can activate Golos next turn maybe. Hope to hit Ulamog or another ramp spell. Opponent hasn't found Excavator yet, but we can safely assume that they have Underworld Breach in hand. Ready to maybe combo as soon as they find Excavator. So I think we activate Golos. Make sure to keep those gates untapped. And then probably want uh, 
blue and red available. Something like this. Found a gate. There's a mesa's end. So let's open the gates. Don't have a lot of gates left. And then Plague Razor with Golos, putting in another gate. So the Grazers are still relevant in the late game. So next turn there's a good chance I can win with Mesa's End. I guess I should be attacking Sahili, not that it matters too much. Discard some lands to hand size. Alright, if they can combo, we could very well die here. But if they don't, we're set up for the win. Another Fibble Thip. Witching Well, so it doesn't look like they found the Excavator. Seven cards in graveyards, no additional Mox Ambers. We'll see. Opponent passes. All right, so let's do a quick count here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I just need to uh, root here, not at my Mesa's End. And then activate Mesa's End for the win. I'm not decking, luckily. And we even got 11 gates as opposed to 10. And our opponent explodes, sweet. So the Underworld Breach deck with a bit of a slow draw wasn't able to combo, but uh, yeah, we got there pretty quickly thanks to all the ramp. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, facing a Yorion deck. Uh, hand seems fine. Turn one Grazer, putting... Is it Guild Gate so we can spiral Guild Summit for a bit of card draw? But if we're up against a Jeskai Yorion deck with Agent of Treachery stealing our lands, it's going to be difficult to win with Mesa's End. Some sort of Amazon version. No land drop for the turn, sadly. Time for Guild Summits. Into Golgari Guild Gates, draw a card. And Root is looking pretty good. So that's going to get gates number 4 and 5. And then I might as well shock myself and get the gateway plaza. So we don't have to deal with the one mana cost uh, later when we draw it. Golos might get Mesa's end. Another Uro. Also a card we could be playing. Although the three drops are pretty full with Guild Summit and Gates Ablaze. 
So... What do we want to do? Probably Golos, and then... I don't mind getting another Gates, as opposed to Mesa's Ends. Although both are reasonable here. Maybe I should get uh, Mesa's End. Spiral. And then next turn we could just activate Golos. I guess we'll keep the Gracer in hand. Sometimes keeping Gracer is useful when we activate Mesa's End to put uh, Mesa's End back into play. In case we've already played a land for the turn. So we don't really want to play Gracer out unless we have a reason. So we currently have five gates in play. Opponent also with Golos, but they might be getting a different land here as we see Field of the Dead. So I want to keep the gates ablaze to clean up a bunch of zombies. So... Let us activate Golos. Before playing a land. Open the gates, can get a land. It doesn't matter too much which one. And then we can spiral. Alright, I'm not drawing too many gates. Don't think I want to play the gates ablaze, since we're currently leveraging Golos, whereas the opponent isn't really. And pass a turn. And then we're hoping to find another route, maybe just cast an Ulamog. Could also work. When activating Golos, I should be paying attention that I don't tap my gates, because if we hit another Guild Summit, I want to be able to tap those gates to draw cards. So I should probably be tapping manually. Thassa to flicker Golos, get more Field of the Deads. Knight of the Reliquary, ooh. Knight could potentially get ways to destroy my Mesa's End and my Gates. So I probably have to Gates Ablaze just to get rid of the Knights. We're actually very close to activating Golos twice per turn. I think if I play this land untapped, I will be able to. So maybe that's our play. We'll activate first in case we find a land. Although it's gonna have to be an untapped land for me to actually uh, use Golos again. So we'll do whites, reds, and then uh, three more. Something like this. Right, hit some guild summits, so let's play those for free. Do I want to tap anything? Can probably tap one. And then I can still cast my Gates Ablaze. I guess I could make it two since I'm floating one green mana. So I'll tap another one. This will just get a Gates. And draw three. Cast Gates Ablaze. Did I miscount? I guess we can still cast an Open Gates. Get another Gates. 
And then we should almost be at the point where we can win with uh, Mesa's End. Discard to hand size. So let's do a quick count here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've got the eighth one in hand. Golos can get one. And Mesa's End can get another one. And we've got Grazer for the extra land drop. No, I am not making this up as I go. So we'll see. Can also cast Ulamog, never a bad deal. So, let's play Golos, not tap Maze's End. And there's another Guild Gates. Alright, perfect. Grazer can put another one in play. And then activate Maze's End for the win. We've almost drawn our entire deck. And then in response here, I should activate Maze's End. Although we have another Growth Spiral in hand, so it doesn't matter too much. But in case we drew the other gates, I should activate this to make sure uh, I do this now. Resolve. And get gate number 10. Opponent with a Scape Shift in response, but the lands come into play tapped, so they can get Ghost Quarter to blow up my gates. So our opponent will get to make a million zombies. Approximately. GG's. Get the gates. I guess we might have even had uh, 11 gates here instead of 10, so even with a bit of overkill, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Fine opening hands. Only one gate. But uh, we've got some ways to find more with goals. Facing a turn one elf, always scary. Could play Guild Summit next turn before we grow Spiral. Opponent on Elementals. So finding a Gates Ablaze eventually is going to be pretty key as well. And Leaf King Druids triggers Risen Reef. So her opponent also ramping nicely. Best draw here, probably Roots, but I'll take a Gates of Blaze. Would we'll just kill Risen Reef and Lanor Elves, but I think that's enough uh, value here. Hope to find an untapped land for Golos next turn. Narset's pretty mean since it shuts down my guild summits. So I gotta play Gigantha to pressure Narset, or I can get, I guess, uh, Mesa's End, which I won't lose any value from guild summits.
Find Stymio. This could be a Flood of Tears deck now that I think about it. A Flood of Tears Omniscience combo deck. That just tries to put a bunch of permanents in play. Yep, there's the Omniscience. And then uh, cast Flood of Tears to cheat Omniscience into play and then win with Tamio getting back Flood of Tears with a minus three until they draw their entire deck and then Jace Wielder of Mysteries or Thassa's Oracle can win the game. All right, gotta attack this Narset and hope it dies. All right, that worked. I shall miss your company. Now I get to draw with the Guild Summit again. Doesn't matter too much what we get. Alright, found a couple gates this turn, but we could be dead next turn. Let's find out. Blast zone up to two. Gets back Risen Reef, so they probably already have Flood of Tears in hand. And that should be game over. Yep, and there it is. So Flood of Tears puts Omniscience in play. Omniscience lets them cast whatever they want, including Tamio. And as long as they have four permanents, they can use Tamio to minus, get back the Flood of Tears. And uh, do it all over again, essentially. Put back Omniscience in play with the Flood of Tears. And as long as they're drawing cards, in this case with the Risen Reef, they are digging deeper into their deck until they eventually draw their entire deck. And Chase Wilder of Mysteries is their win condition. So this is gonna take a while to actually kill us. So we could sit through it, hoping the opponent makes a mistake somewhere, which can happen. They have to make sure they don't put the wrong card in play when they cast Flood of Tears. They had another one in hand. But it looks like her opponent knows what they're doing. Alright, I think that's gonna be it for me. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. Uh, not doing a whole lot early on, but I've got some nice ramp with the roots into Golos, so we'll try it. For opponents on an aggro deck, then we could be in a bit of trouble, and the Ornithopter definitely indicates some sort of uh, tempered steel deck, another new card. Gates of Blaze should be useful, though. And then the Angel can maybe help stabilize us after taking a bit of a hit. Glitters. 2-4 Ornithopter getting in there. Gotta get my blue mana sorted. So let's go blue-black maybe. Steel Overseer. Don't want to let Steel Overseer get out of hand. But maybe I can afford to wait, because if I Gates of Blaze now, then I also lose my answer to Ornithopter potentially. Although, of course, if it picks up plus one counters, it makes it more difficult to kill it. So, not sure if I'm supposed to Gates of Blaze just the Overseer. I think I'll wait and then just play Grazer here. 
put more gates in play. And then next turn maybe Root or Golos, we'll see. And then hopefully we'll still have enough gates to deal with the board. Full take Servant plus Steel Overseer, very good too. Can untap the Overseer and activate it again. Which might also put our Gates Ablaze out of range. So I think I take it this turn. Surprise they didn't activate with Overseer. So they probably missed out on one damage. Interesting. Untapping the Ornithopter instead of Steel Overseer. Not sure why they're doing that. Let's get some more gates. And then next turn, how many gates do I have in play right now? One, two, three, four, five. Definitely jumping the Ornithopter. Not our Steel Overseer. Yeah, they probably should be using the Steel Overseer before untapping it with the Servant here. Alright, untap land is actually pretty valuable. It's gonna be a 2 for Ornithopter with 2 plus 1 plus 1 counter, so 6 toughness. So I guess if I do Golos into Gates Ablaze, I wipe the entire board. All right, I guess that sounds good to me. Had they used the Steel Overseer and Voltaic Servants the way they were supposed to, then we probably lose this game. But I guess I'll take it. Of course, we could have also just played Angel to gain a bit of life. So, time for Gigantha and activate Maze's End. Still have to watch out for potential hasty Ginger Brutes. Crystal and Giants. More Gates Ablaze. So activate Mesa's End and get a Gates and then next turn we should be able to get there. Can play Grazer and Angel here using Gigantha. Currently 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 gates. And we can make it 10. <laughs> Cast an Ulamog, because why not? I guess we should win with uh, Maze's End instead here. I'll uh, resist the temptation. Alright, so we managed to win with the alternate win condition from Maze's End multiple times today. Definitely exceeded my expectation in how easy it is to actually assemble, and uh, the deck's relatively fast at doing so with all the ramp. Root's definitely a big help in getting the alternate win, a card that I don't think was uh, legal when Maze's End was around the first time. So yeah, pretty fun ramp deck if you like ramping but don't want to be playing Field of the Dead. This could be a nice alternate win condition, or you could potentially play both and have Mazes and, and Field of the Dead in the same deck. And uh, if you don't want to get the entire Historic Anthology expansion, you can just use two wild cards on your Mazes End, maybe a few on Ulamog as well, 
but you don't need to get the entire expansion so you can just get whatever you want so yeah that's gonna be it for me today want to thank you for watching hope you enjoyed and as always have a nice day I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.